amount of melt in your mouth factor is just beyond anything else. Welcome to Japan. I'm Luke Martin and today I'm in the city of Yokohama. So easily accessible from the Haneda airport, Yokohama is just about a 30 minute train ride from Haneda. So a great alternative for travelers visiting Japan. Maybe you've already experienced Tokyo and you want to experience more. Well, Yokohama has tons to offer. And in today's episode, we're going to be showing you all kinds of things you can do here in Yokohama. And of course, we're gonna be tasting all sorts of cuisine and you might've already recognize that I am wearing a kimono. So this is a popular thing to do here in Japan to rent out a kimono. So this morning I went and got dressed at a place called Haikala Kimono Kan and we've come now to a park called San An and we're going to take a walk around taking the views before we start eating. This is my first time ever wearing a kimono. It's quite an experience. I'm definitely standing out but it is awesome for taking pictures. So it's going to be a great episode. Make sure you stay tuned until the end. Let's go explore Yokohama. Do a little fit check here. <laughs> I've got a nice little bag. There's so many layers to this. This has a little snap thing like this. She's tied me up real tight and you can see I've even got the, the shoes with the special socks. Yep, quite an experience. Awesome for taking pictures and what a beautiful place to walk around here the San Keon Garden. Awesome wearing the kimono and just taking some pictures here. One more thing, also the umbrella. Luckily, it's not raining today because I don't think it would do a very good job in the rain. I think it's made of paper, but completes the outfit. So actually this park used to be the private residence of a local Yokohama billionaire who made his fortune selling silk back in the day. Now it's open to the public, anybody can come and visit here. There's also all kinds of uh, historical uh, relics and architecture, like 400 year old buildings. The leaves are starting to change color. It's not as uh, vibrant as we saw in Kyoto. I think we're a little bit early for Yokohama, but just incredible, incredible views. There are definitely still some opportunities to see some beautiful autumn colors here in Yokohama right now. Look at this incredible, incredible carpet of yellow leaves right here from this massive tree. Wow. Besides the incredible views here at Sankeon, you can also find some snacks. We just stopped at this little shop here that's selling some traditional Japanese sweets. So this is called Dango Mochi. So it's mochi on a stick and then it's served with a beautiful, beautiful matcha tea. And then over here, this is another type of dango, but this is really cool. They've got all these different toppings. So that's sweet potato, edamame, chestnut, and then pumpkin. Let's try the matcha. Mm. To be totally honest, I'm not a huge matcha lover like I know some people are. It's a little bit bitter for me. Let's chase it with some mochi. Mm. Oh, they're stuffed. Yum. I think that's sesame on the inside of that one. Yum. So this one is the mochi on the bottom, but then it's got these kind of purees on the top. This one, the orange one is pumpkin. So let's try that. I'm just going to take it all in one bite. Oh, it's warm. Oh. It's delicious. Super chewy and then creamy pumpkin flavor on the top. Yum. Let's try the chestnut next. Mm. Yum. Oh, I love chestnut. Yum. There's seven people standing there watching me right now. Finish off at Sun Keon Garden. Beautiful park, incredible place to take pictures, especially if you're wearing kimono like this. But now it's time to go taste some of Yokohama's famous food. We're going for Gyu Nabe, a beef hot pot. Let's go. So we're here at Araiya restaurant to try the famous Gyu Nabe, which originates here in Yokohama. But first they just brought us out uh, an appetizer, some beautiful looking sashimi. So we've got amberjack and then some amazing tuna. Oh, just can't go wrong with tuna here in Japan. Let me grab a little bit of wasabi. 
and then go for just a little dip in the soy sauce here. Mm. Yum, super fresh, melts in your mouth. I think it tastes even better because I'm wearing a kimono. Just waiting for the gyunabe to arrive. So the gyunabe has arrived and look at the beautiful, beautiful beef here. The fat marbling in there just looks incredible. You can see all that fat. So it's simmering away in this little kind of hot pot. And then there's other ingredients too. We've got some tofu, there's some greens back here, little noodles, there are some leeks back here and then also shiitake mushroom but really it's all about this beef and you gotta kind of just let that simmer away and cook it's on a little kind of uh, candle tea light and then the dipping sauce here in japan quite interesting this is the dipping sauce <laughs> so it's just a raw egg give it a mix get that yolk all mixed in and that's going to be what we dip the beef into That is awesome. It's actually on the sweeter side, that uh, broth that is simmering in. It's a little bit sweet, and then when you dip it in that egg yolk, it just completely coats it. It's so creamy. Look at how much beef is in here too. Really generous. Oh, that is amazing. One of my favorite things to eat in Japan. Any kind of nabe or hot pot or sukiyaki, shabu shabu, anything like that, so good. It's quite a healthy dish too. There's also some veggies. There's some leeks back here. Try one of these. Mm. Yum. Oh my God. The flavor of the broth, it's sweet, but now it's starting to get kind of infused with that beefy aroma from that amazing quality beef and all that fat kind of melting into it. Some noodles. Mm. Yum. Oh, you gotta try this in Yokohama. Seriously, seriously satisfying meal. And I feel like maybe some people might get a little freaked out with the, the raw egg yolk, but I promise you it just works so well. Hi. It's like creamy and it just works incredibly well with the beef. Mm. Coats the outside. Oh, man, this is awesome. That was awesome. Anything with beef in Japan, you can rest assured, it's gonna be delicious. So we're gonna continue our food tour here in Yokohama, but let me switch out of this kimono first. So I've changed back into my regular boring clothes and I've come now to Yokohama Chinatown. This is one of the most popular attractions in Yokohama. It's a street that is just lined with Chinese food. You can see the Chinese red lanterns. There's a big Chinatown gate. I've never actually been to a Chinatown in Japan before, so we're gonna kind of stroll around, see what we can find to snack on here. You can see just how popular the Yokohama Chinatown really is. It's packed with people, locals and tourists. It's a really vibrant Chinatown with all kinds of colors, all the lanterns, and we are just scoping out what Chinese food to try. Let's go eat. So we spotted a line at one of these shops and couldn't resist passing it up because they had some incredible looking barbecue uh, buns, baked barbecue buns, and this is it. And just look at how delicate that is on the outside. It's so, so like delicate. It's got like a layer that's kind of hovering over the filling. So let's bite into this and see what's inside. Oh my, yum. Super juicy pork on the inside. It's like sweet pork. It's definitely got some of that kind of Chinese five spice. I don't know if you can see it there, but it is super, super juicy, creamy pork on the inside. And that bun on the inside is ridiculously like crumbly and delicate. Mm. Yum. Definitely on the sweet side. Not bad at all, yum. So another really famous uh, Chinese sweet. I'm kind of hesitant to call it a Chinese sweet because it's also Portuguese. This is the famous egg tart, famous especially in Macau. Let's try it out. Mm, does not disappoint. Super, super creamy, silky smooth custard filling. 
And then that pastry on the outside has just got layers and layers. Really, really good. Look at that. I love the contrast between the super creamy inside and that flaky crust on the outside. Mmm. Yeah. So on to our next stop here in Chinatown. This time for some Taiwanese food. It's Taiwanese ji-pai, Taiwanese fried chicken, the best fried chicken in the world. Sorry, Korea and all you other fried chicken loving countries, but Taiwanese fried chicken just hits differently. And just check this out. It's bigger than my face. This is absolutely massive. And it just smells of five spice, a little bit of salt and pepper on the outside, freshly fried. Let's try it out. Oh, whatever that batter is, it gives these like bubbly, crunchy pieces on the outside, but the inside remains extremely juicy, tender chicken. I don't know if you can see, but it's just dripping with juice in there. Look at this. That is so juicy and good. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. Yum. Just look at the size of it. Massive. Wow, definitely gotta check out Chinatown here in Yokohama, all kinds of delicious Chinese foods. We're finished with our snacking now and we're taking you to another must-see attraction in Yokohama. It's the Cup Noodles Museum. Let's go. about the brand and the inventor who created the iconic uh, cup noodles, the instant noodles. Every university and college student owes their thank you to this man for creating one of the most incredible inventions of all time, instant noodles. And now I've come to my cup noodles factory where we're going to actually create our own custom cup of noodles. So first we have to kind of design the, the package and then we'll start filling it up with the ingredients. I don't think they're going to be putting my design on any of their uh, official uh, cup noodles anytime soon, but we've got the chopstick travel and a little Canada flag. Why not, right? Showing off. Chopstick. Chopstick right there, and that's like noodles and travel. I got the red because this one got the red color. So, oh, mine looks terrible. <laughs> After you finish designing your cup, you can pick what uh, base you want. So there's a regular like soy sauce base, they have curry, seafood, chili, tomato, and then you pick your ingredients. They have all kinds of different things, all uh, dehydrated shrimps, meat, corn, veggies, fish cakes. So we're gonna go make our custom cup noodle. Now the hard part, we have to pick what ingredients to go in. Uh, the chili. Chili tomato, a little spicy. I kind of went like Korean style. I got chili base with a bunch of kimchi, cheese, and corn. So there it is, the final result is really cool. It goes through like a conveyor belt and it's all uh, 
vacuum sealed up. I don't think this is gonna be their top selling cup noodle anytime soon, but uh, I really like the kimchi. What did you get in yours, Meg? I have egg, kimchi, corn, and then with cheese. Yeah. yeah. All right, final step is to, I don't even really know what I'm doing here, putting it inside of the bag. I'm gonna inflate it so we can take it home, have a little souvenir from Cup Noodle Museum here in Yokohama. It's kind of cool. You like pump it up and then it uh, makes this nice little bag that you can kind of show off your, your custom cup noodle. So you get to learn about the history of cup noodle and then you get to make your own noodles and then you can come to the shop and uh, of course buy yourself some of their classic flavors after making your own custom flavor. Really unique experience. Never seen anything quite like it. Definitely got to try it out in Yokohama. <laughs> So for dinner tonight, we've come for sushi. We've come to a conveyor belt sushi restaurant. So you can either order from the conveyor belt or pick your pieces up as they go by, or you can order up a plate like we did. This place is called Maguro Donya Group. It's a chain restaurant here in uh, Yokohama and Japan. And we've got this incredible spread of sushi. So let me introduce everything here. So we've got tons of tuna on the plate and that's just how I like it. So this is a marinated tuna. We've got crab here. This is a salted tuna. We've got oto. Toro, Chutoro, Akami. Back here we've got the Ikura, the Salmon Roe, and the Uni, the Sea Urchin. This is a fish called Kinki. And then we've got Anago over here, so Sea Eel. This looks amazing. All right, let's start with the Akami. Mm -hmm. That first bite of sushi when you visit Japan, it's always a special, special moment. That just tastes so good. Even that's the akami, the lean cut from the back of the tuna, it still just melts in your mouth. So I'm just working my way from least fatty to most fatty. This is the chew toro, so medium fatty. Mm. Oh my God. The heat from your tongue is enough to just completely melt it and turn it into a liquid. Incredible. And this is the, the prize cut of the tuna, the belly, tuna belly, the otoro. Look at that just chunk of fat in the middle there. Streaks of fat. Only needs a tiny little bit of soy sauce. There's already wasabi underneath it. Incredible. If you've never had Otoro, there's nothing quite like it. The amount of melt in your mouth factor is just beyond anything else. The only thing I can really compare it to is like a really fatty A5 Wagyu steak. It just completely disintegrates all that fat. Oh, so good. That was some really good sushi, especially that uh, Chutoro and Otoro. We're gonna keep exploring Okama. There's so much to see here. Just took a beautiful ride in the Yokohama air cabin over the city. Incredible nighttime views. Wow, that's a stunning way to see the city. So we're gonna head to an area called Nogei next, which is famous for its izakayas. So it's Friday night in Yokohama, and we've come to Nogei, which is famous for izakayas, nightlife, and we just popped into this izakaya here that's popular for their yakitori. So yakitori is a grilled chicken on a stick. We have one right here, and it's just dripping with juice, and it's great with sake, and what's even better to have it with is sake that's specifically made for a uh, yakitori. This is sake with a picture of the yakitori. Look at that. It looks the exact same. <laughs> Let's try the yakitori. Just grilled chicken on charcoal. Look at that. Beauty. Mm. Very smoky. Super, super smoky. Yep. Oh, it's great with the sake. The second yakitori has arrived. This one is really interesting. I've never seen this before. It's pork wrapped around a bunch of pickled ginger. It's just dripping in juice. Whoa. You better really love Japanese pickled ginger because that is really strong ginger flavor. Yakitori can roughly translate to beautiful things on a stick. 
This one is pork wrapped around lettuce, dripping in sauce. This is a questionable one bite, but I'm going for it. Super hot, fresh off the grill. And that one's like extremely juicy because the lettuce just soaks up all that sauce. It's basically a salad, it's like grilled salad. On the first night of our trip to Yokohama, we stayed at the Westin Yokohama, a beautiful hotel with incredible design. The room that we stayed in was probably definitely the largest hotel room I've ever stayed at in Japan with incredible views over Yokohama City. We also enjoyed a Japanese fine dining meal at the Iron Bay restaurant located in the Westin with the highlight definitely being the Wagyu beef. We're here at Iron Bay at the Westin Hotel here in Yokohama and we just sat down for an incredible meal. We've got our main course, it's a Yokohama beef Wagyu steak. Just check out this beauty. And they've given us this incredible uh, custom knife. They said it's it's made by the same people that make the samurai swords katana and just cut through that like absolutely nothing. Butter. Look at that beauty right there. Oh my gosh. explodes with fat and flavor wow another great option for more affordable accommodation is the oakwood suites yokohama what a perfect way to wrap up an exciting day here in Yokohama City. We just did so much stuff today. There's really a lot to see here. And like I was saying earlier, it's super easy to come to Yokohama, especially if you've you know, spent a lot of time in Tokyo, you're looking for something new. Definitely consider checking out Yokohama, just a 30 minute train ride from the Haneda Airport. Thank you to the Yokohama City Government for inviting us here and sponsoring today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We certainly did. I am stuffed. Just love this city. There's so much to see. And make sure if you haven't already subscribed and I'll see you guys on the next episode of Chopstick Travel. Bye.